Uh, okay, so as you can see, the calculation with uh, limits and stuff is always complicated. Now I want to give you a more sort of geometric approach to this that makes it a little bit nicer, a little bit kind of crisper. Um, So right, you know, in this setup, it seems kind of like a big algebraic nightmare. Now we'll give a geometric way of thinking about what's going on. So I'm going to draw this picture from the perspective of the xy plane, but Remember that above that, there's, there's a, a surface sitting, right? So we've got you know, some function f of x, y, and we're just going to focus on the inputs, the x and y inputs. Okay, so if we've got a point a, b, and we fix a direction v, then we can imagine a path that passes through the points A, B in the direction V. Okay. So we, we fix a point in space, and then we walk through that point in direction V. Okay. So there's a parameterized path There's a path that I'll call P of T. Passing through that point. Observe. That when we plug in zero, we get that output. doesn't look tremendously different than the stuff that we've, we've got here. Right? We've got our base point plus h times our, our direction vector. Here we've got our base point plus t times our direction vector. Similar things. Okay. So what we want to know is how does our function change along this parameterized path? What is the rate of change as we walk along this path? Calculate this out, we can write out what this would be. And now this is a very lovely composition of functions. 
we've got a single variable input, single variable splits into x and y, we put those into f, single variable output. Now we're back in the land of single variable functions, right? Single input, single output. So we can take derivatives. So we're going to get our rates of change for our function at that point in the direction v. So this equality here is just based on the idea, so based on the, the notion that this path passes through AB in the direction B. And now we need to calculate this derivative. And what did you guys learn from Anastasia on Monday? What was the topic of Monday? Yes. Yeah, it's chain rule, right? And here we've got a chain situation. We've got function inside function. So let's look at how these functions depend upon the input t. So So I've got this kind of a chain of dependencies. When I change t, that changes x, that changes f. When I change t, that changes y, that changes f. Right. So what we get So when we change t, we'll get some change in this guy. <clears throat> and some change in this guy. Okay, I should define these uh, p1s and p2s. change in this x coordinate, that will affect the change in, in f, according to the chain rule. 